Hare Krishna, welcome. Jai Radha <coughs> Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Krishna Mahamantra Ki Jai. So we're going to speak tonight a little bit about the upcoming sacred month, which is the most sacred month of the year. For those of you who are quite new to Krishna consciousness or are not familiar with, we'll speak about this particular month, which starts on the, I believe, 19th or 20th of this month. I'm not sure one of those two days. 
Some calendars say 20, some say 19. And it's the uh, most sacred month of the year. And because it is, the spiritual activities you perform during that month, you get double mercy. It's the two to one for sale. Buy one and get one free. <laughs> so you get extra mercy on this particular month by performing devotional service. And if you happen to go to the holy place of Sri Vrindavan, which is highly recommended, you, your mercy is multiplied unlimitedly. So devotees from around the world converge on the holy land of Vrindavan, the place where Krishna appeared in the world, and perform the activities in the month of Kartik. This is called the month of Kartik. Uh, for the pleasure of the Lord, and uh, it's a very joyful experience. So wherever we are, we can benefit from this particular month. It is called the month of Damodar because the Lord had performed a particular pastime in this month, which is very, what we say, typical of his childlike nature. The Lord performs activities in different phases of his appearance, as he appears as a child, he performs mischievous activities as a child, and his activities create great happiness for those who experience it, either directly or even hear about it. So uh, we won't get too much into the details of the, that'll come up in the next, in the next few weeks. But we'd like to just mention that it's recommended that there are what is called austerity. Austerity means perform some activity which may appear to be difficult, but at the same time brings great spiritual benefit, such as denying oneself of a particular type of activity or a particular type of uh, desire that one likes. And uh, performing devotional service rather than trying to fulfill that activity. Austerity, we sometimes say, is the wealth of those who are spiritually enlightened. It gets one off of the physical plane and puts one on the spiritual plane. Austerity is very... And in this month, each person is recommended to perform particular types of austerities. Of course, there was one activity that is not an austerity, that is a very joyful experience, and that is that we uh, come to the temple, or if it's not possible, in your home, make a little temple with a picture or even a deity of Radha Damodar, Mother Yasoda, tying up little baby Krishna to the grinding mortar, and perform arti by offering what is called a ghee lamp to the Lord with devotion. Now that ghee lamp is very significant to bhakti. And how is that significance understood? Sometimes love or devotion is characterized or compared to light and hate, inauspiciousness, and evil is compared to darkness. So that light is a reflection of one's devotion to the Lord. So when we offer these ghee lamps, we are offering the light of our love, which is within our heart, to the Lord in the form of this form of worship by offering these ghee lamps. So if we are always conscious, when we are conscious of the activity we perform, in other words, if we are aware of how to perform the activity, we get much more benefit than simply going through the motions. A lot of times we can sometimes gravitate down to a mechanical way of doing things, even in spiritual life. And that has some benefit, but not as much benefit as doing something with being consciously aware of how to do it in the best and most devotional way. So when we offer these ghee lamps, we are offering our love in the form of this light into the, onto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in this form, Sri Damodar himself. 
Another thing that we perform, this is also part of the same ceremony, and that is we sing the Dhammadarastakam, which is eight beautiful prayers composed by one great saint named Satyavrat Muni, where he glorifies this particular Leela of the Lord by very carefully enunciating the different activities of that Leela in the form of a beautiful, beautiful song, a beautiful bhajan. Namam Miswaran Satchit Anandarupam Latsat Kundalam Gokulhe Brajamanam Jasodami Aluka Dvavavamanam Param Sritayantat Thank you. That was the first stanza of the Dhammadar prayers, which really brings us into the whole mood of worshiping the Lord in, this, in his particular form as a baby. The Lord can assume any form he likes. He is all-powerful. And he, he performs these activities in his different forms for two reasons. One, for his own pleasure. <laughs> God does things for his own pleasure. <laughs> and he also brings us into that activity where we can experience pleasure also. So that's how bhakti works. God performs so many activities. And because he is by nature joyful, Sometimes God is depicted as a guy who just gives you a hard time because you don't do what he says. <laughs> but that's not the real image of the Lord. The real image of the Lord is that the spiritual world is a place of unlimited happiness uh, and unending happiness also. And unending knowledge and unending varieties of activities centered around serving the Lord and engaging in activities with the Lord. And so when we uh, perform these, when the Lord appears, he appears in different forms for his own pleasure, but he invites us to come along. And that's his mercy. So as we take part in these different activities, we're actually experiencing the happiness of spiritual life. If spiritual life is not happy, it's not spiritual. <laughs> Sometimes we think, oh boy, rules and regulations. I can't do this. I don't want to do that. And I can't do that. I want. I should have did that. And I'm going to get in trouble because I did that. Uh, but that's not spiritual life. Spiritual life means to to try to serve the Lord under the guidance of those who can teach us how to serve the Lord with a desire to please the Lord and take part in the activities that the Lord offers us in the form of his different pastimes. So he's inviting us into this pastime of Dhammadhar. And it's not something theoretical, it's not something imaginary, it's something real. It's something you can experience directly as you offer your attention and your devotion to the Lord by performing spiritual activities, especially in this month. And this month is very sacred. And so in some of the things that we can also do to enhance the quality of our spiritual life in this month, which has greater benefit because it's performed in this month, is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. The Lord, like I was when I was singing the kirtan today, I was I was just meditating on the fact that Krishna, you have given us your name so we can chant it. But what are we doing with it? We're offering it back to you. We're taking your name that you have given us so we can experience the happiness of chanting, and we simply offer it back to you. And you're simply pleased if we can offer it back to you with devotion. It's your name. <laughs> Amazing. When you think how merciful the Lord is, he doesn't make it hard at all. It makes it very simple. Just chant my name. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> but sometimes we think, you know, there's other things to do. 
<laughs> but if we put the chanting of the holy name in a high part of our day-to-day -day life, we will find, we will start to understand what this spiritual life is. It becomes so, what we say, wonderful. And chanting in the month of Damodar, the month of Kartik, brings great, great spiritual happiness. As we mentioned earlier, the double the amount of experience, the happiness, the knowledge, the mercy, uh, the facilities to engage in devotional service are all multiplied in this particular month of Damodar. It is also the it is also Radharani's month. She's called Ujeshwari, mm -hmm. and so this month is called is also characterized by the month of Radharani. So sometimes we say, well, what is this Radha Damodar? Where does Radharani fit into this particular pastime? Because we see that the pastime consists mostly of Krishna being tied up by his mother Yasoda. We don't say Yasoda Damodar, we say Radha Damodar. Isn't that curious? Sometimes devotees think, well, maybe we should say Yasoda Damodar. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, one of the greatest saints in Vaishnava culture, explains that when when uh, Yasoda was trying to tie up her little child, Damodar, of course she couldn't do it. And she was getting more and more and more rope and tying one piece of rope onto the other. And still she was trying to tie up her little child, but she couldn't do it. And she was getting, she was laughing at the same time she was confused. <laughs> she was thinking, what is this? I keep adding rope and it's always two inches too short. Is the rope getting smaller? Is my child getting bigger? None of that was happening. She couldn't figure it out. And this was going on, and then the ladies in the village all came with their different ropes, and they started to offer it to Mother Yasoda, and she was tying it onto the bigger rope. Still, too short. Krishna was exhibiting his mystic power. If he doesn't want to get tied up, he doesn't get tied up. <laughs> he does what he wants. So now, Radharani comes, she's a little girl, she takes the, the little ribbon that's tying her little top knot in her hair, she takes it out and very carefully gives it to Mother Yasoda, Mother Yasoda ties it onto the rope, and guess what? <laughs> Radhadamadar. <laughs> so yeah, Bhakti Siddhanta says, this is the actual understanding, Radharani came, and made the pastime complete. So that's why we understand it, Sri Sri Radha Dhamma. And if you go to either Vrindavan or to Jaipur, the original deities of Sri Sri Radha Dhammadar are situated in Jaipur. And the Bhu deities, or the, what, what do they call those deities that are in, in, it's a reflection of the real deities, but they're just as good as the real deities, are in Vrindavan. They perform this pastime of Radharani tying up Krishna <laughs> by taking a vine, and Radharani's holding the vine and she's putting it around the waist of Krishna like that. So you see Radhadamadar. So they perform that. And that pastime of Krishna stealing butter and being tied up by his mother happened on the Diwali day. So if we can remember that. Although Diwali is in honor of Lord Ramchandra. Now, why did Krishna choose Diwali to perform that pastime? I'm sure one person here knows the answer. Does anyone know why Krishna chose that day to perform? The day where Sri Ram comes back after being in the forest for 14 years, enters into the city of Ayodhya, grand celebration, the Lord has returned. Does anyone know why the Lord performed it on that day? Because Lord wanted to give tribute to the monkeys. Because the monkeys assisted Ram in his pastime of bringing back Sita to him. And therefore, in order to honor the monkeys, 
the Lord performed that activity on that day. Interesting. And you see, when Krishna was stealing butter, what did he do? Gave it to the monkeys. <laughs> the monkeys were the first ones in line. So it's interesting. That's why it's, Krishna did it on that particular day. So when Krishna does something, it always has a very, very sweet and very, very sometimes very esoteric meaning to it. So that's it. Krishna brought Ram Lila into Krishna Lila simply by performing it on that day. So uh, other things that we can also benefit from in that month is to hear and chant the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the personification of Krishna in literary form. It is the spiritual treatise that will bring one's consciousness in understanding what is pure devotion to the Lord. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the best of all spiritual scriptures. It glorifies the Lord, it glorifies his activities. It is 18,000 verses long. It's, I don't know how many pages. If you read 41 pages of Srimad Bhagavatam every day for one year, you complete Srimad Bhagavatam. This is a nice little exercise that devotees thought. Let us read every day 41 pages in one year we can complete Srimad Bhagavatam. That's how long it is. And of course, it's the essence is the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, especially in this month of Kartik, which is also mentioned in chapter 9 of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. The entire pastime is there. So take some time, read this pastime, speak about this pastime, share it with others, and uh, make your home a little temple. Put a, a picture or even a deity of Radha Dambodar or Yasoda Dambodar in your home and perform this activity. It's the most beneficial. And for those who, who can travel, go to Vrindavan. <laughs> go to Vrindavan because it's very auspicious. Of course, there are millions of people who come, so it's a little crowded, <laughs> to say the least, but still, the atmosphere is very, very spiritual. So this is some of the benefits we can perform on this particular month. And there are many, many holy days in this month. As we mentioned, there is the Diwali. There is also Govardhana Puja, Govardhan Puja which we'll probably celebrate here in the temple. It's one of the most joyful festivals of the year. Uh, worshiping the Lord as Giridhari, who lifted the Govardhan Hill and uh, distributed the mercy of so much foodstuffs to the residents of Sri Vrindavan Dam. It's also the month of the disappearance day of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. His disappearance day is also in this month. It's also the disappearance day of Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj, the appearance day of Naratam Das Thakur. Uh, so many great saints, sages, and other and personalities of the Lord appeared in this particular month. It's a very sacred month. If you happen to die in this month, you're fortunate. <laughs> so make that a plan. <laughs> I mean, don't do it voluntarily, but you can you can pray for it. <laughs> and please, Lord, if I have to die, let me die in the month of Dhammatar. Whenever that my time is up, you know, this is the, this is the place. This is the month to be in. So it is a very auspicious month. What can we say um, other than uh, take part enthusiastically? I think the temple does the Dhammadar Astakam prayers in the evening, right? Usually at 7.30 every evening. 8.30? 6.30, okay. 6.30 in the evening, come to the temple and with all the other devotees, you can sing the prayers of Dhammadar and offer wonderful lamps to the Lord in front of Shri Shri Kishore, Kishori. It's a beautiful experience. My experience with the month of Dhammadar is that when it, it's over, I'm thinking, 
Now what do I do? I feel so, now I feel something is lost when the month is over. It's such an exhilarating and spiritual experience in that month that you think, why not all year? <laughs> it's just so wonderful. So take part in that month. And that is Radharani's month. And because it's Radharani's month, it's also special blessings coming from Srimati Radharani. And if you get blessings from Radharani, you automatically get blessings from Krishna. They come together. So, in fact, it's mentioned that without the blessings of Radharani, the blessings of Krishna are practically impossible to receive. So we always pray to Srimati Radharani to give us her mercy in the form of devotional service to Krishna. That's her mercy. Like that. So this is a very wonderful opportunity and those of you who don't know about it there are books um, there are uh, Sanatana Goswami has very carefully delineated the eight verses and he's given also purports on the verses um, and there's a few periodicals you can read about that but the essence of the pastime is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto chapter 9 of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So try to take part in this wonderful festival and uh, be benefited. The process of spiritual life is to take advantage of the mercy. Our endeavors in spiritual life is simply an expression of how to receive mercy. Whatever we put forward in the activities of spiritual life cannot be in itself conclusive. You need mercy. And the quality and the enthusiasm that you put into your activities brings about the mercy. And when Krishna is merciful to you, taktva deham purna janmani maiti mamiti surjana, then you're guaranteed to reach the spiritual world. So we, we, we're always begging for and trying to understand how to receive the mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord comes by chanting his holy name and by serving the devotees. So how can we serve the devotees in this month of Dhammadar? By encouraging and inviting and even coercing <laughs> devotees to take part in this activity so they can benefit like that. So the more people we put in, the more people we can bring in, the more Krishna will be smiling upon us. Because Krishna's happiness is when he sees others are coming to him in devotion because he knows that is what we are looking for. We are, we are looking for Krishna. We are looking for that principle of ultimate happiness which is represented by devotion to Krishna. And so this month is very, very auspicious and you have a wonderful, wonderful temple here. Shri Shri Kishor Kishari soul beautifully displaying their mercy in the form of their personal presence along with Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani and the manifestation of unlimited mercy Sri Sri Gaudanitai. Never take this place for granted just think well yeah we got to go to the temple or it's nice to go to the temple I can see who I can meet today. <laughs> No, always understand that coming into the temple, you're coming into the spiritual world. It's non-different. As soon as you walk out that door, you're back in the material world. <laughs> this is the spiritual world. Why? Because devotional service to Krishna is the only activity within the confines of this building. So because of that, that atmosphere becomes permeated with mercy of the Lord it becomes very, very powerful. So it's the Lord's personal home. We come in and we offer our respects and we offer our worship to the Supreme Lord. And that is our happiness. <laughs> and that is our happiness. And the more we can include others, that happiness is increasing more and more. So these are some things we can think about in our devotional life. How to increase devotional service. We should not become discouraged by the social, political, and the economic situations in the world. They have nothing to do with spiritual life. They may affect us in our day-to-day -day life to some degree, but if we take shelter 
and I use that word in a very strong way, of Krishna and devotional service, we are completely, and, and I emphasize, completely free from the effects of the material energy. Because the spiritual energy and the material energy are quite opposite. <laughs> when one is in the spiritual energy, they're not touched by the material energy. And when one is in the material energy, they can't understand the benefit of the spiritual energy. So therefore, try to take shelter more and more of the temple, association with devotees, take part in these wonderful pastimes. The Lord performs these pastimes for our pleasure and for our spiritual growth. He does it because he wants to give us an opportunity to associate with him in devotion like that. So I thank you very much. I don't know what else I could say about this month, but maybe if you have a few questions, we can uh, go from there. So if you have any comments or questions on the month of Dhammadar, or well, let's expand it outward. Any questions about anything on some spiritual topic? Any of our guests who have come to the first time, they can also ask questions about anything. Now, if you don't ask questions, there's two reasons. <laughs> One, you know everything, <laughs> and two, you weren't listening to the lecture. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the wonderful class. Uh, when you said, like, don't take this place for granted, like, uh, I felt it is so true because uh, be, till the pandemic I was always thinking okay temple is there festivals are there always anytime we can go and attend but when the temple was closed for one and a half ah, years that time I, I realized so badly like yeah, don't take it painful. for granted oh, <laughs> very yeah. painful so that's why it was very Why true Krishna when you did that just to help us right? yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. when you said that I was thinking yes that's so true don't take this place for granted yeah, if they don't yeah. want it will be closed and we will be out so yeah, you thank you so much it's like sometimes when somebody dies who is dear to us we think oh boy i wish i would have spent more time with them i wish i got wish i got to know them better but don't wait till you lose something before you can appreciate what you had always take it to see that these temples are oasis we will also say they're like spiritual embassies. Just like in the material world, you find there are political embassies of every country and in other countries. So when you walk into that embassy, say you walk in, say you're in India and you walk into the American embassy, you're in America. You're no longer under the influence of the Indian society, the Indian rules. When you walk here, you're in under the care of the spiritual energy automatically. And the more you become active in that spiritual energy, the more you can realize that. Yeah, so it's, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Yes, we have a question. On... Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for the wonderful lecture. I have a, uh, somewhat of a question about austerity. You mentioned uh, uh -huh. austerity is uh, bringing great spiritual benefit mm. and it is you know, denying oneself a particular desire. So <clears throat> could you elaborate more on what, what, uh, how I can actually observe austerity? Um, what is austerity or what are some recommended austerities? Um, both, I guess. I guess where I'm coming from, it's easy for me to go into denial of a particular desire, but I understand that's not alone austerity. I can also go to the other side and indulge myself in desire, and obviously that is not austerity. So, mm -hmm. could, could you help me with that? Well, there, the scriptures also give recommended austerities. There's austerities of the body, austerities of the mind, and austerities of speech. So these are mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Austerities of the mind is satisfaction, to be satisfied. Simplicity is austerity of the mind. Um, gravity, that's another austerity of the mind. 
to deeply contemplate spiritual philosophical teachings, that is called gravity. These are all recommended austerities. Austerity is speech, is to speak truthfully and beneficially and avoid speech that offends others. That's the asperities of speech. Asperities of the body is cleanliness, uh, worship of superiors, such as the father, mother, spiritual teachers. What else? Celibacy. These are austerities of the, of the body. And there's a few more. Um, these are, so we, we follow them. And of course, we follow the four regulative principles, which are the basis of all the austerities we perform. <clears throat> Yeah, so if he's following that, that's nice. But then again, a devotee will think, well, what else can I do that will, will help me to advance? Just like, for instance, we could say, well, I'm chanting 16 rounds every day, so on Kartik, I'll chant more. I'll chant maybe 25 rounds every day. I know devotees chant 64, some of them. Some of them do 32. So yeah, to increase the quality or increase the quantity and hopefully the quality of your rounds is a form of austerity. To every day read the scriptures, that's an austerity. That is at a particular time. So there's so many like that. What this austerity simply means getting you off the bodily conception of life and getting you on the spiritual platform. That's the essence of the definition. Does that help? Good, thank you. Anyone else? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, uh, I have a question on uh, mercy. Mercy. Um, when one says that you're in mercy of Damodar, are you in mercy of... Um, when one says that you're in mercy of Damodar, or you're in mercy of Radharani, um, and sometimes you say in grace of Damodar, or in grace of Radharani, does mercy um, also mean grace? Is that, is, is that an equivalent, like mercy and grace? It's similar, but it's different. Mm -hmm. Grace is something that comes without any extra endeavor. <clears throat> and mercy is something that you somehow or other do something, and because you've done something, or you've done something in, the, in a certain consciousness that's pleasing to the Lord, you receive mercy. But grace can be given any time without any prayer notice. The Lord wants to be gracious to you or give you grace that he can just do that for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Similar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Interesting question. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, we have always been, like, I have always been listening to, um, like, Krishna avatars. Mm -hmm. Krishna. Rama is also an avatar of, like, what I know is uh, every god is an avatar of uh, Lord Vishnu. Now, Ramadi Murti Sukalaini Amena Tishtan. Nana Vatara Akano Bhuvanesha Kinchu Krishna Swayam Samabhava Paramam Pamanyo Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Vajami. That verse explains that, yes, Krishna is the source of all avatars and Ram is the principal manifestation of the avatars. Yeah. And today we were discussing about uh, Radharani. Hmm? So I was a bit curious, like uh, Radharani? Radharani, whose avatar is Radharani? She's not an avatar. She's the internal pleasure potency of Krishna. She is the personification of pure devotional service. She is non-different than Krishna. She is his feminine counterpart. 
she's not an avatar. She is. Uh, we call her Bhakti Devi. She represents pure devotional service. And she holds within her power to give the mercy of Krishna to anyone and everyone. She's very kind by nature. So she's not an avatar. <laughs> she doesn't fall into that category. <laughs> She is Krishna's internal pleasure potency, <laughs> spiritual pleasure potency. She gives spiritual pleasure. <laughs> and she's the personification of Krishna's pleasure also. In other words, she pleases Krishna more than anybody. <laughs> okay, anything else? You have to have four heads to see everybody here. <laughs> Maybe that's my next man of you know, Lord Brahman. <laughs> okay. That way you don't miss any questions, you know. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Uh, and so, oh, another question? No, okay. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki, Sri Kartik Vrata Ki. Shri Kamadar Ki, Shri Kamadar Ki Jai.